You know, there are a number of things that probably we have never said. Not because they're wrong things necessarily, but they just don't kind of fit with who we are and what we're about. In fact, I think I can safely say, Mary Alice can correct this if I'm wrong. I don't think she will. In our almost 36 years of marriage, I don't think I've ever said to her, Honey, I'll be right back. I'm going for a run. <laughs> don't think I've ever said that. When I've been good in my exercise program, and I have at times, and we all need to, that's not been my chosen choice of, of exercise. But you know, in this congregation, running is a very popular activity. We've got a lot of our uh, populace here who like to run. Among our young people, we've got probably six to 10, somewhere in that number, of young people who are running cross country, who are running track, and doing so extremely well. We've got a number of adults uh, who are involved in that activity, and, and that's wonderful. It's terrific. In fact, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and embarrass her because it is a note of achievement. Lucy Vaden uh, was qualified this year uh, to run the Boston Marathon. Uh, having a baby kind of interfered with that <laughs> actually happening, but good runner. It's the 1st of December, the first Sunday in December. We've been running for 11 months now this year. We've been over hills and dales and twists and turns. We've been ups and downs. There's a lot of things that's happened this year. We started our year in asking questions. Luke 11, 9 and 10, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. We ask questions from the Bible. What do you seek? What is truth? What have you done? Who is Jesus? What shall I do with Jesus? What must I do to be saved? Am I my brother's keeper? If a man dies, shall he live again? What is a man profited in gaining the whole world but losing the soul? And how shall we escape if we neglect salvation? At the end of March. We finish that initial series. And I'm getting excited about the series we're going to start 2012 with in a few weeks. But my point today in thinking about the concept of running, we don't need to just kind of fall over into 2012. How about let's finish strong? Let's finish this year strong. Let's be more devoted to the Lord now than we've been all year long. Let's not just wait for a date on a calendar to flip and then we'll, we'll, I'll pick up with some good things then. How do you know we'll be around then? Let's finish strong. Let's have the faith and the determination to do what is needed. Now, I don't know, as I admitted to you a little while ago, a whole lot about running, but I know someone who's running a race are not supposed to slow down as you get close to the finish line. You're supposed to burst through, are you not? To be running as fast or faster then than at any other time during the race. Leaning forward with all of your might. Let's make sure we finish the year with exactly that kind of attitude and that kind of determination. I want us to think about that in relation to some words that the Apostle Paul shared with his son in the faith, Timothy at the conclusion of his second letter to him. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, we notice the first point. It is a charge to finish strong. Paul says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Sometimes we need to be charged to do something. Now, we know what it is to, to charge our phone. We know what it is to charge something that has a, a battery attached. Without the charge, it is of no use to us. 
Sometimes we become useless because we do not submit to a charge. This particular charge is one where Paul is telling Timothy, I urge you, I exhort you, I really want to persuade you. These various matters that he's talking about. Sometimes we need that to be verbally kicked in the back of our pants, to be urged to do the right thing, to not be reticent or reluctant, to be strong in our determination. Notice he says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In a sense, they're called in as witnesses. Paul says, I'm, I'm calling you, I'm charging you, and before the witness of deity itself, you need to be engaged in these things. Wow, that's, that's pretty strong company. But that is exactly the company that we live under the view of each and every day of our lives. That is exactly the, the concept of supervision that we need to appreciate is taking place. They are witnesses to our race. 1 Samuel 16, 7 reminds us, the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You know, there have been occasions in races over the years, it doesn't happen very often, I think there's a lot more controls than there were years ago, but I heard about a bike race not too long ago somewhere, I can't remember where it was, where the race was taking place and somebody caught a bus for half the way and took his bike over and jumped back in and hey, I did really well. There have been people who've taken shortcuts over the years. Trying to say, ah, or maybe just throw water on and say, oh, look how hard I worked. The Lord sees us. He sees our effort. He knows the engagement or the lack of it. And it is in that kind of, of witness from Him to us that should cause us to really want to be willing to accept the charge that is laid out before us, to allow ourselves to be challenged and charged by by God's holy word to serve and to be served by him in the process. Specifically, he says to Timothy to preach the word, to share the word, in season, out of season, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the timing, no matter whether it be popular or unpopular, to be willing to stand for what is right and what is good. We cannot finish strong nor be charged properly without God's word. But then there is a challenge to finish strong. Nothing worthwhile is ever accomplished unless there is some sacrifice at some point along the way. Back in 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, it says, For the time will come. Why does he need to be charged? He says, Because the time's coming when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth, be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. One thing he says is, please, Timothy, don't ever let the conduct of others become your standard. Now, sometimes when we're growing up within a family among the siblings, you know, you can have a situation and say, yeah, but why do I have to if she doesn't have to? Why do I have to do that? He's not doing it. He didn't, you know, you begin these comparison things. And there may be very good reasons why there are specific roles and specific tasks for each specific person. And sometimes we try to bring ourselves down to what is required of us by trying to pick something in someone's life that maybe wasn't done on a high level. It's, oh, there's my standard. I guess that's human, but that's not what God's after. God's after excellence. God's after us setting a, a tone before each other that's truly going to be 
a standard of, of quality. He says, you fulfill your ministry, but he says, be aware of the fact that you're going to be surrounded by people who aren't finishing strong. You're going to be facing people who don't have those same values. As you're running, <laughs> if you're a runner, you've probably experienced this. It, has, it wasn't me, by the way. But if you're running on the street, on the sidewalk somewhere, and somebody comes by and honks horn at you, hey, giving the impression almost, don't you wish I was as fast as, you were as fast as I am. No, you're the one doing the work. You're the one putting in the time. You're the one reaping the benefit. Everybody is not going to be of the same mind, sadly, when it comes to spiritual things. That should not be a surprise to us. That is exactly the way it's always been. We need to be an example before others as to how to run, to use our image of a race. Paul says the time's coming, and by the way, it's here when people will run for themselves and not for God. They'd even be willing to change the rules of God's race or to have no rules at all so they can live with themselves and their choices. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is the concept of waiting on the Lord and allowing our relationship with Him to be the driver and the motive of our lives. When we run from truth and run to fables, we've just run into a prison of eternal disappointment. John 8, 32 tells us that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. To the Galatian brethren who were mixing their Christian faith with their former way of life, Paul says in Galatians 5, 7, you ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth. We don't want to have our run in the Lord mentioned in that kind of past tense. You used to run well. No, we need to be currently running well in our relationship with Him. But then there is a choice to finish strong. Beautiful, meaningful passage and one very familiar to you in 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. Paul says, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day and not to me only, but unto all them also who have loved his appearing. You know, there's a really big difference between I will and I have. Some of us live in the world of I will. I will, I plan to, I'm going to. I never did, possibly. But I love how Paul phrases this as he looks at the end of his life and he, he evaluates not proudly, not with ego, but with gratitude for what he has been able to do with the Lord's help or maybe better stated, what the Lord's been able to do with him. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. It is in those havings that are mentioned in that passage that we can appreciate the results that come from that. He says, as a result of that, there's a crown of life. There is a, to the victor go the spoils. There is a crown that I will enjoy, but it's not to me only, but unto all them also. Who've loved his appearing. He's talking about me. He's talking about you. But we got to finish strong. We all can look back in time to a point of some achievement that we might have had. Maybe it was very special. Maybe it was uh, noteworthy when it comes to even the community knowing about it. And all that's well and good. But what's happening now? Have you made any press and have you made any headlines in heaven lately? 
doesn't require a, an amazing thing necessarily other than just good, solid faithfulness to God. That always makes headlines with God. Just a cup of water shared in His name. Faith dedicated to Him. Love expressed to other people. Opportunities to acknowledge Him and sharing your faith with others. In Acts chapter 20, verse 22, Paul says, And see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy, and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Heaven was sharing with the Apostle Paul, you know, you got problems everywhere you're going to go. There are chains and there are tribulations awaiting you in your very next city. He said, but I got to tell you something, those things don't, don't get me. Those things don't move me so that I can finish my race with joy. I'm not about to stop. I'm not about to quit because there's something far more important than my comfort. There's something far more important about that than my physical circumstances, but rather it is the spiritual realm that I have committed myself to, to finish strong my journey for the Lord. It's so important to look past the finish line. Because if you look past the finish line, you see the crown of righteousness that is awaiting. Maybe as we conclude this morning, you're saying to yourself, yeah, but I can't do it. And I don't really think anybody can do it, you might say. Well, I just have one to point you to specifically who already does. Jesus has already made it. And he came and accomplished it so that you can be confident that you can accomplish that which he has empowered you to do. Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, some of you who love to run, I would absolutely love today to say, how about you running for me this afternoon? You young ones... Take a lap for Mr. Jeff this afternoon, please. He would appreciate that. But you know, that's really not necessarily going to benefit me, is it? Other than you thought well of me to do that, and I appreciate it. But physically, that doesn't help me. Je Mr. Jeff's got to run. Or we've got to do whatever it is necessary to benefit ourselves. We're all in this race somewhat individually, aren't we? We have collective benefit, collective responsibilities, but we're individuals as engaged in it. But having said that, I do want you to appreciate this morning as I do that somebody did run for us. What's that passage say? Our forerunner, Jesus Christ. He did run for us. He ran a race we needed him to run, and he won it. Now we can be involved ourselves. He has done that which we could not do for ourselves. And because of what he has done, we now have the hope that is a part of that beautiful summary that we read just a moment ago. That should cause us to want to finish strong for him, to finish our year with zeal, with energy, and with great devotion, and know that the Lord will bless the process. Don't just exist for the next week or two. I think at the end of the year, there is such a tendency to do that. There's a lot of things with the holidays we enjoy. There's a lot of things that we, we appreciate. Do not, though, stop running hard through the end of the year with your faith for God. Is there somebody here today who needs to come to the Lord to follow Tyler's example 
and having Christ a part of his life, putting Christ on in baptism through a, an obedient faith, it'd be our pleasure to assist you in that process as you enter the race, as we stand and sing.